XVA Trainer is a companion app for the XVA Synth app, which uses well-known voices from video games to generate text-to-speech through controllable neural speech synthesis models. XVA Trainer is like a one-stop shop for getting new custom voices trained for use in XVA Synth. There are three main components to XVA Trainer. The dataset annotation creation and analysis, the data pre-processing tools, and the actual model training framework. It's important to remember that during the end-to-end -end start to finish process of training a voice, over 90% of your attention will be spent on working with the data preparation. So let's start with the dataset annotation creation and analysis. This is the part where you can view existing datasets already in the correct format and adjust the text transcript or record new data for it if it's your voice. The XVA Trainer app needs all voice datasets to follow a specific format. It's quite simple really, it's just all of your audio files in the dataset folder under a WAVs subfolder and accompanying that a transcript file called metadata.csv which has all the text spoken now in each audio file uh, written next to the name of the file. If I quickly preview what this file actually looks like, uh, it's just a long list of file names, a pipe symbol delimiter, and then the text. To view and analyze datasets in the app, start by opening the folder where you have all of your datasets. Best if this is on a SSD, just to make sure everything is as fast as possible. The datasets you have in that folder will show up on the left here, and you can also create a new one from the plus button at the top. When you make a new dataset, you need to enter a bit of info. Uh, other than the name, you need to provide the ID of the game category used in XVSynth, that usually just the game name. The ID code is the shorter prefix used in all the voice ID and also needs to match the XVSynth data. You can find both of these in the JSON files in the XVSynth asset files or in the info pop-up for a voice in the app. If you're making voices for a game not yet supported by XCSynth, you can prepare the asset files for that and then share them alongside your model. Once that's done, you can record new lines, uh, playback audio, adjust the transcripts, and analyze and prepare the data using the available tools. The next section of the app, data preprocessing, is what you'll need to use when the data you have won't be in that required format shown previously, which will be 99% of the time. The most important step to make sure the quality of a voice model is high is to make sure your data cleaning and preparation is as good as possible. The AI speech model will only output what you teach it, so if the training data quality is bad or inconsistent, so will be the generated audio. This section is just a collection of tools uh, that you can access from the tools menu. There is no step-by-step -step set of instructions on which tools you need to run in which order because it very much depends on what your data actually looks like. However, I'll quickly cover some of these to give you an idea of what's available and give some more details on why you might want to use them. So all the tools here are used in the same way. There is an input folder or two, an output folder, and a run button. For whatever tool you decide to use, you use it by opening the input folder, putting your data in there, clicking the run button, and then getting your data out from the output folder. Starting with the first, the AI source separation tool is a tool that automatically separates speech audio from background noise audio. So, for example, if you have audio of someone speaking, but there's music playing in the background or lots of other non-speech audio, then this tool can clean that away such that you end up with just your audio files containing speech audio only. The AI speaker diarizationization tool is useful for when you have really long audio clips of one or more speakers, like from a movie or a YouTube video. The tool takes your long clips and automatically splits them into short clips of where the speech is and then automatically groups up those clips into different folders for each speaker. So if, for example, you have an hour-long audio clip of three people speaking in an interview, this tool will output three folders of short audio clips separated uh, by speaker. 
The audio formatting tool is probably the one that everyone will use. All the audio used in training has to be 22050 hertz mono WAV format. So no MP3 files, OGG or anything else. Whatever audio you have, if FFmpeg can read it, this tool will automatically convert it for you into the correct format. I generally recommend that people only get data for a voice from a single source as different recording conditions in the data could harm the synthesized audio quality more than it will help. However, if the main difference is just the loudness of the files, then the audio normalization will help by bringing everything to the same loudness baseline. This is a good tool to use regardless, even if your data is from a single source. But then keep in mind that you'll have to adjust the synthesized audio levels to make them match the training data. A speech dataset can be trained with a single speaker only under the default settings. That does mean that all the audio in your dataset will have to be from just one speaker. And depending on how much data you have, it might not be easy to manually verify that. If you have hundreds or thousands of audio files, it'd be very impractical to manually clean the data. Alternatively, you may have a large collection of audio files from an unknown number of speakers, and you may want to sort them into folders for each different speaker. Finally, you may have audio files all from one speaker, but you might want to filter out clips of them shouting or whispering or coughing and so on. The cluster speaker tool can help with all those situations. If you have lots of audio files, primarily from one speaker, but with other speaker clips also in, you can run the clustering tool to automatically group them into folders based on speaker similarity. If you reorder by the principal cluster, you'll end up with the output folders sorted by the main speaker in your files, and you can delete the last few folders to remove files with other speakers. If you just had one speaker in your files, the ordering will keep the average sounding groups of clips near the top, and the most extreme speaking styles like shouting and whispering near the bottom. It's generally a good idea to remove these and keep mostly conversational style clips only. If you don't have a main speaker, but rather lots of speakers, the tool is useful for separating them out into folders, just like sorting in the speaker diarization rotation tool. The remove background noise tool is a less extreme version of the AI source separation tool, which is useful for constant noise, like constant hums from microphone recordings. This is mainly useful to improve home microphone recorded type of audio clips. You need to provide this tool a clip from your audio data of just the background noise with no speech to remove from the clips with speech. The speaker similarity search tools are a way to reorder your data based on how similar the data sounds to a set of query files. So if you, for example, have thousands of files from many speakers, and a handful of files from a specific speaker that you want more data of, and you know that there are clips of that speaker in that bigger corpus, then you can use that handful of query files to rearrange the bigger corpus of audio. The files from the same speaker will be at the top. The transcribe tool is useful in the majority of cases where you don't already have a transcript of all your audio files. Rather than having to hand annotate hundreds or thousands of files, this tool will generate one of those metadata CSV files for you automatically. If the voice isn't too crazy and non-human, the transcript quality will be pretty good, but of course not perfect. The quality will most likely be good enough for training with, but you can always adjust the text in the main app. Finally, the WER tool is used for evaluating the quality of the transcript and is best used from the main app. Uh, this is useful if you have your own set of transcript files, but you're not 100% sure if there are no mistakes. If there are lines where the text matches the wrong audio file, the training quality will suffer. This tool uses the auto transcription backend to generate text for each file and then calculates a word error rate score against it. And if the generated text is greatly different from your text, then a reddish box will be shown. So that was the data preprocessing done, where again, you'll most likely be spending most of your attention on. But once you're finished with that, and you have a well-formatted, clean data set to work with, you can kick off the training. You can access the training part of the app from the play icon at the top right. 
This menu is split into three parts. The training queue on the left, where you can queue up a number of voices to be trained. The middle section, where the training progress is shown using both text and graphs. And the system resources on the right, which show you the utilization of your computer's resources. Start by adding at least one of your datasets to the training queue. Here, you need to configure the training setup. The dataset path is the folder path that contains the metadata.csv file and the WAVs folder. The output path is a temporary folder where the intermediate checkpoints are written to. The models trained in the app are not trained from scratch. Instead, some existing models are fine-tuned. That way, the models don't need to learn how to speak from scratch. They just need to learn this specific voice in your dataset. So the checkpoints here specify which models to fine-tune from. It's fine to just use male or female for most cases. You can give a full file path to the specific checkpoints though, if you know what you're doing. Finally, you need to put down the batch size which best matches your system. And the higher the value is, the faster the training will go, and to some small degree, the better the quality. However, the higher it is, the more GPU VRAM is used, and running out of VRAM crashes the training. Play around with this, but keep it as high as possible. Once that's done, either start batch training all of the items in the queue or click on a queue item and hit start. In the middle section of the UI, you can see feedback for how the training is progressing. The bottom half will show you feedback as text, giving specific details on what's currently happening. The top bit shows visually how the errors in the models decrease over time. You don't need to do anything anymore now other than wait. Depending on your hardware, the training will now run for several hours maybe even a day or two. There are five stages. Each stage handles different parts of the model and have different speeds. Stage one is more CPU bound, but the others are more GPU bound. You can keep an eye on the system graph to see how well your resources are utilized and to make sure that the VRAM uses are as high as possible, but not maxing out. Adjust the batch size to control that. The stages will advance automatically. Once the average loss percent delta value is shown in the graph on the right reaches a data dependent threshold, shown as the blue line. You can pause and resume the training at any time, retaining state. Alternatively, you can fully stop the training and resume later from a checkpoint. The training writes checkpoint to disk every so often at each stage. When the training is finished at the end of stage five, your model is almost ready for use. Head back to your dataset view on the main page and hit the export button. Add in the path to your checkpoints up folder and your export output path, likely your XVA synth models folder for your game. This will prepare all your files, including the metadata and audio preview, ready for use in XVA synth. Feel free to share your models, including on the XVA synth Discord server, where you can also join for other advice and discussions around both XVA synth and XVA trainer, and keep up to date with future plans and updates. Have fun.